Welcome to the Trader 24 Studios for your daily financial update on the global markets. Another nervous day is over with investors seeming to have anticipated the impossibility of a market recovery in the short term on the one hand and to be weighing higher risks for investment positions and therefore demanding higher premiums and returns on the other. At the front line continues to be the shifting monetary policy of the major central banks towards a higher benchmark interest rate regime, as inflation has become an excessive disturbance to economic systems. And while the US and the Eurozone are already facing levels not seen for at least 40 years, it is the turn of Australia and New Zealand to buy tickets to the same interest rate destination, as they have announced excessive increases in their consumer price index rates, accelerating expectations of aggressive interest intervention by their banks. Also, the well-known divergence of the crude oil price against Brent appeared, after a long time, approaching 10% and foreshadowing an increase in volatility, recalling that crude oil futures are settled by physical delivery, while Brent only by cash settlement. In other respects, the parade of corporate results in the US continues, with about a third of those in the S&P 500 announcing by Friday. The agricultural commodities and precious metals markets look weighted down in the shadow of an endless war. The US dollar remains at 20-year highs, while the freight market is under pressure, having lost more than 50% of its average value since the end of 2021, and the government bond market remains depressed, reflecting investment uncertainty. You are watching the Trader24 Daily Global Market Overview. Let's take a closer look at the situation. On Wall Street, the mood was not the best, with the major indices moving into negative territory throughout the regular session, but without heavy volumes being traded that would have, would have caused undue concern. Walmart's disappointing financial results have not only led to heavy liquidation in the stock, but have left suspicions that inflationary vice will tighten even further, given that giants like Walmart are maximally exposed and are related to early indications for the medium term. The New York Stock Exchange Index closed negative at minus 0.71%, taking back the gains of the previous day's session, resting within the 14 to 15,000 range that has plagued it for the sixth week, with continuous alternating positive and negative sessions of moderate volumes. The key indices S&P 500, Dow Jones and Nasdaq also closed with losses, being constantly in negative territory with the tech one recording the biggest percentage losses, minus 1.87%, while the small cap did not do well either with the Russell 2000 at minus 0.69%. Most S&P sectors closed with losses, except for real estate, healthcare, and utilities, with consumer discretionary at minus 3.31% and telecoms at minus 2.05%, recording the largest negative signs. Shares of Carnival at minus 7.41% and Ralph Lauren at minus 6.15% from consumer discretionary and Paramount for, uh, with a minus 4.47% from telecoms were the negative leaders. The VIX risk index gained another 5.69 percentage points, setting the stage for a bigger move. The main negative protagonists in the large cap were Fortinet with minus 7.77% and Walmart with a minus 7.60%, with the latter also disappointing in terms of financials, while in technology, the worst performers were Peloton with a minus 8.80% and Okta with a minus 8.04%. We had uh, finan finally, in the industrial Dow Jones, mixed signals with a 14 out of 30 closing in negative territory with all, all eyes falling on Microsoft, which outperformed with a 4.05% gain thanks to a good second quarter financial results. In the pre-market now, most listed companies are moving into positive territory with the Chicago futures giving a tepid bullish opening. Asian markets closed with mixed signals. The Hang Seng collapsed by minus 0.53%, moving away from one-week highs in the shadow of poor sentiment in, on Wall Street week, with the domestic market under pressure after the IMF revised China's economic growth rate to 3.3% instead of 4.4%. Shanghai and Shenzhen were unchanged, Japan's Nikkei saw controlled gains of 0.20%, and the Australian 200 saw month highs with marginal gains of 0.33%. European markets closed with losses on the back of the ECB's decision and negative GDP growth forecasts. The DAX 40 and the 50 Eurostox saw minus 0.80%, while the 600 wasn't changed. 
The critical Italian political issue opened by Mario Draghi's resignation remains open while the ECB has already joined the war of hikes, with the first interest rate increase in 11 years. Daimler stock is currently seeing the biggest gains at plus 4%, while multinationals from the consumer goods sector, such as Adidas with minus 3% and Louis Vuitton with minus 2%, are moving in the red. In Athens Stock Exchange, Greece is moving positive in the general and 25 large cap indices, with the banking sector at 1.05%, while turnover remains extremely low for another session. In U.S. Treasuries, there was little change with investors leaving the U.S. 10-year yield well off the local highs at 2.79%, the critical level as a six-month low. The 30-year is in the 3% zone, the spread has opened dangerously at 24 basis points in favor of the 2-year, and obviously the volatility in the coming days will be high. In Europe, the yield on the German Bund was depressed to 0.97%, the spread of the Greek is at 205 basis points, the Treasury spread is one at 187 basis points, and the yields at 98 basis points. Still, air prevailed in the forex market as the mighty US dollar remained unchanged, with the dollar DX index standing at around 106.5 and the exchange rate with the euro in the region of 1.02. The prob problematic nature of the expected further Fed benchmark rate hike this week remains, with investors anticipating the 75 basis points at the same time as Australia and New Zealand are seeing aggressive shifts to their respective dollars due to a sharp rise in inflation rates there. The New Zealand dollar is at a one-month high of 0.6230, and the Australian dollar approached 0.6950 per US dollar. The pound was yesterday's big gainer, appreciating against all, and remains above 1.20, while the yen again sees 134 per dollar, just below the recently reached multi-year highs. Finally, the Canadian dollar depreciated to a six-week low of 1.29 per US dollar. In commodities, there is an increase in the gap between Brent and crude, with Brent now around $10 per barrel, which occurs when volatility is about to increase excessively. Crude oil continued to hover uh, below $100 and at three-month lows, while Brent closed positive at $107, with fears that the Fed's monetary policy will strangle economic growth. Also, the problem of very expensive natural gas remains, with the European TDF soaring around above 215 euros per megawatt hour and at historic highs, and Henry Hub near historic highs of around $9 per million thermal units. Silver remained unchanged at $18.50 per ounce at two-year lows, while gold held just below $1,720 on investment fears of poor macroeconomic developments in U.S. GDP. In agricultural com commodities, oats lost $4.35 per ton, approaching 12-month lows due to weather conditions in the U.S. and Canada that led to forecasts of higher-than-expected supplies. Wheat reacted upwards at $8 per bushel, in line with the announcement by U.S. officials that they will not sanction imports of seeds from Russia and the bilateral pact under discussion between the two warring countries to open the safe path to the Black Sea to resume the transport of priority goods. Coffee Arabica reacted at $2.10 per pound thanks to forecasts of a downturn in Brazilian production. Stocks fell to a 23-year low, with the ICO reporting a shortfall of 3.13 million bags. Cocoa remained at its own seven-month low, around $2,320 per ton, while sugar saw a $17.4 per pound, a new 12-month low. Finally, in the freight market, Baltic closed negative again in the face of the risk of a serious recession in the coming period, and in fact, it is still losing 50% of its price in only a few months. Individually, Cape Size lost 5.4% near one-month lows, Panamax lost its five-session uptrend streak, and Supermax closed marginally negative at minus 0.3%.
In terms of economic announcements, today all eyes are focused on the announcement of the Fed's new interest rate policy, while earlier in the day the weekly announcement on the change in crude oil inventories is expected, with forecasts talking about another decrease of 1.12 million barrels. Yesterday in the US, the results of the Consumer Confidence Index were released, which fell for the fourth consecutive time, as additional interest rate hikes are likely to continue to be a strong counterweight to consumer spending. In terms of corporate announcements, today we expect the financial results of Meta Platforms, with projected earnings per share of $2.56 and revenue of $28.94 billion, Qualcomm with projected earnings per share of $2.89 and revenue of $10.87 billion, and T-Mobile with projected earnings per share of $0.2597 and revenue of $20.11 billion. Also set for today is Mars and McLennan's div dividend X date with a yield of 1.50%, up 16.67% on a quarterly basis. Yesterday, financial results were announced by Microsoft with earnings per share of $2.23 and revenue of $51.87 billion, both below forecasts. Alphabet with earnings per share of $1.21 and revenue of $69.69 .69 billion, both below forecasts, and Visa with earnings per share of $1.98 and revenue of $7.28 billion, both above forecasts. As everyone awaits the Fed's announcement today on raising interest rates in order to bring record inflation of 9.1% under control, the cryptocurrency market saw 10-day lows in the early morning hours. As the time for the controversial announcement approaches, however, a timid rise is becoming apparent. Specifically, Bitcoin seems to have returned for good to the 18,000 to 22,000 area, where it had been stuck since the beginning of June and managed to briefly break through just last week. Since yesterday it has been moving close to the 21,000 area, the second largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization after Bitcoin Ethereum has also fallen below $1,500 after the noise around the merge faded and equity markets in Asia and Europe suffered losses. Futures tracking Ethereum posted losses of $88 million, for the largest among uh, crypto futures, as traders took profits after moving from $1,100 to $1,600 in the recent weeks. The stable Tether currency, which in theory should always have a value equal to $1, found stability for the first time in two months, as it regained its peg to the dollar on July 20th, and has remained stable since then. Finally, altcoins are on, the, are on the rise, with Monero's X, XMR at $152.34 with a plus 7.4%, Quant's QNT at $95.13 with a plus 16.25%, Optimism's OP at $0.84 with a plus 9.55%, and Polygon's Matic at $0.81 with a plus 8.71%. Thank you for joining us today. It was the Trader 24 Daily Global Market Overview. Stay tuned for our next comment on the financial markets.